All this funny phase started in 1972 when I had been not painting for some years and I suddenly thought I got to go back and all this sort of happened. There are different things. This is simply sort of bodges, really, of watercolour and it's gouache, which means that it's solid. It's rather like oil paint, you know, if you mix oil colour with watercolour with white, you can paint over things, you can, you can paint over, you know, lighter over darker. I think basically they were done in three entirely different ways. Um, all ways which sort of suggested themselves rather than having any preconceived ideas of how they should be done. Um, this, this, this is part of a group which happened, and I think happened is, is absolutely the right word, um, after just painting at random, more or less, these sorts of pieces of colour, not much, it's all sort of blue-grey and white and black watercolour, and then noticing that certain shapes were coming out of it, accentuating those shapes just with black paint, black poster colour. Just, we'll just look at it sort of rather briefly first, and then th this gave rise to a very large painting, which was a kind of copy of this, but not, not a, an exact copy at all. That let's say that this, this sort of triggered the idea of doing bigger. It had this, has this strange central figure here, well, I called it anxiety, which probably ex explains it. Everything was wrong, in a way. And in the big painting, which we'll see in a minute, you can see other things which are wrong. What I, what I discovered fairly early on was that one can turn these shapes into animal or human forms quite simply, putting in eyes, which one can start off with dots and then perhaps make them a little bit more elaborate. But without these without these dots and these eyes. It would be purely abstract, they're just shapes. But with the dots in the, in the eyes, they make to me a whole lot of um, living forms, really. And I don't know whether this wonderful word anthropomorphic is, is, is relevant here. Um, I think it is to some extent, and it's a rather good excuse to use it. I don't use it very often. And that is quite a, it's quite a development of the original, very sort of sketchy one. We still have the central feature of this man with his deformed hand. Um, all these things, which are mostly sort of animal, fish, birds, um, which happened because one put the eyes in, see these eyes, are in a sort of state of distress. And that all happened. I didn't think, you know, how do you, how do you paint a distressed little robin or something? Or is this, um, they're all, it's a little bit like there's, there's a, a sort of nasty story which H.G. Wells wrote about a, a man who was doing vivisection. Um, it's called the Island of Dr. Moreau. And on this island he had a whole lot of animals and he was mixing them up. He was making sort of one animal being a bit of one and a bit of another. And there was a sort of horror about the whole thing. And I wasn't thinking of the book when I was doing it, but I think the same same sort of thing seems to have happened here. Um, this, you've got this central figure. You've got something strange here, which is about to bite him. You've got something up here, which looks like a cow or something similar, and another one here. And what's happened is that the leg has got longer and longer and longer. You know, everywhere you look, something is wrong. Something is, if you like, I don't think there are any happy shapes. 
And up here is a little bird, and it's only got one wing and one leg. Um, I don't quite know how it's flying with only one wing. But again, I think it's a sort of, it's a, it's a painting that the spectator can take part in. And different people will see quite different things. There's a very strange figure here, which is sort of half human. It's a question of what you make it, really. But it's all a great surprise to me because uh, I can't, I can't trace any history where things came from, or any any method or any idea. They're, they're all just things that happened. I think it's quite a nasty painting, really. <laughs> <coughs> I've had this criticism, not, not about these so much, but people who say, um, oh, that doesn't make me feel very good. And uh, I overheard somebody once looking at the landscape and saying, I hate that, it makes me want to put my coat collar up. <laughs> this, this is mm, it's not a happy picture, is it? I once had a, a phone call from a doctor who said he wanted to visit my studio and hopefully to purchase. And he came and he looked quite a long time and he said, I'm sorry, he said, but uh, you see, I'm buying for hospitals and I'm buying paintings that probably will go into waiting rooms. And he said, in waiting rooms you have people who are disturbed. And he said, um, we don't want to put things into the waiting room which would make their disturbance worse. <laughs> but I wasn't showing him things like this. <laughs> I was just showing him landscapes. But uh, there we are. I had Indian ink in a little jug and I poured a lot of Indian ink sort of in the middle here. And I left it for I don't know, 15 minutes or something, so that it would part, partially dry. I then shook it. Now, if you look at this, you can see what's happened when it was shaken. All these things are little streams of black ink. And there are more here. And then I left that for a little time and then I washed it off. And when you wash it off, of course, everything that's still wet um, disappears. And, but what's dried is the edges. You see these streaks of Indian ink which shot out all over the place. They've got black edges. Now the edges are where it's dried and the internal bits are where it hadn't dried and therefore it washed off. I then, I then, then just used watercolour and, and painted the main thing which was some sort of sea creature I thought. Um, and this is another, another one, exactly the same te technique, but these black bits are all accidents and these are where the, the ink had dried and the grey bits are where the ink hadn't dried and the edges, you can see what happens and the edges as if there's a nice little line but one couldn't draw a nice little line like that. And what I have done is painted these eyes on, because like the, the big one, which you've just been looking at, I found that by painting eyes on things, you suddenly turn them into, you, you get quite expressive faces. You see this little chap here, he's got a mouth, which is an accident. And these reminded me of 
those fish that you get in aquariums, which have got bands of black and bands of paler color on. And another thing that I started doing, this has got a number on because it was actually in an exhibition, but no one bought it. Um, I called it, it's high time they changed the water in our aquarium. Really nice, I think, sort of background. And these funny bits, you couldn't do these, you know. Um, I don't take any responsibility for this because it's sheer accident. Do you have uh, a name, a word for the technique? No. It's, it's just something happened, yes, because I did quite a bit of experimenting really with, um, in those days, painting quite heavily and then letting it half dry and then washing it off. I used to take, put, have the thing on the drawing board and then I'd take it outside and literally throw a bucket of water over it. It wasn't, you know, it was all very crude. Um, there wasn't any sort of finesse of let's wash, wash off that little bit or... It was just, you know. And that one I just called a marine biologist's nightmare. Something a marine biologist might discover in the sea which is, had never been visited before. Yes, most of these, this series I, I think is, is a bit creepy. But not all of not all of them. Um, some which I'll show you in a minute on paper are well not sinister, but even a bit funny. Just a bit of Indian ink and good shake. You see, this is the most extraordinarily complex thing. It's like some strange tree form or something like that. I couldn't possibly, I couldn't possibly sort of do this um, consciously because complications are tremendous, really. This was one of the fascinations of it, uh, that, that you could get something like this sort of basic and then Manipulate it in all sorts of different directions. But this is later, this is 85, and I don't know how this happened. I think it was a landscape which went wrong, but left sort of various things which look like people. And I call this one, we shouldn't have eaten those mushrooms. This is unusual because it's 85, it wasn't the original 70s lot. Okay. That's 73. You see, these, a lot of these do a sort of caper of development. I can see at once there's a, a head here with a great big hat on and it would only need a touch to develop it into a, a what, a sort of anthropomorphic form. <laughs> um, and even just, just the dot that's happened there is, you know, there's a sort of animal there with a, like a mouse-shaped head and you can f find things very easily. It's one here with the mouth. Um, you know, Maureen quite often looks at paintings and says, oh look, there's a face there, I'd never be able to look at that now without seeing that face. When it was a flower painting or something. Um, it happens all the time by accident and it, it can happen even more, you see, by intent. There's this little bird here, you only need one little dot there. If the eye went in there, it would be a little bird, wouldn't it? and so on, so on, you could do, here's, here's something with the eyes there already, look, and a couple of ears, and there's his nose. 
I think a certain amount of it you, you can sort of and you can explain by the sort of Buddhist Buddhist idea and Buddhists say that that we we don't live in the real world because we are asleep, not not sufficiently conscious. And uh, they say with a great deal of training and exercises and stuff goes on for years and years and years, we can overcome this barrier. We can live in the real world and we see it as it is. And uh, there's a sort of paradox there that it's exactly the same, of course. <laughs> but, but we are actually conscious of it. And I've always hated the known. I've used to have been bored by the known, say, so always you know, know that. And I've always been intrigued by the um, possibility of there being something else there. And I think these, these have perhaps served this purpose of um, allowing the sort of facility of, well, in this case, inventing, if you like, um, there being something else. And I think it's the something else which has always really fascinated me. And it, it isn't just in these, it's also in landscapes that um, I feel the landscape has to tell me something I don't know. Um, and that's really possibly the how I judge it at the end. Am I going to keep it or am I going to destroy it? Because a lot of them get destroyed feeling that they haven't got there. But there's something there which I say, oh, look, you know. Um, it gets kept because there's... <laughs> I think things have to tell them something. They have to tell me something. You know. One more on these, which I think came from here. And this is none of these things which have has got watercolour and just all these black shapes. There are, there are a number of eyes come in here. You see this little bird there. With them. There's a fish here and there's a, an animal here. I haven't altered any of these shapes, I've just put the dot. If you put the dot, it's, it's almost... makes it into something like... which I find fascinating. It's, it's interesting because you can put the eye in different places and get the sa on the same shape and get something totally different every time. I think it's a bit like, um, and I remember hearing a story about uh, somebody who visited an Eskimo carver. You know, Eskimos have got this very, very soft stone which they can carve easily, I suppose, just with a sort of knife and don't have to use chisels. And this the story goes that, that this that the Eskimo carver was looking at this piece of stone and talking to it all the time and chipping bits off and with his knife and saying, Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Is there is there somebody in there? And eventually, sort of quite quickly and easily he said, Really, um, he's got this little seal. And he said, Oh look, there was a little seal he was trapped in there, and I've let him out. And I think it's like that, with with these to quite an extent. But I think we can lift on the easel and you've got the top. Okay. And I think Teeming with Life is absolutely the right title and, and sort of explains. Because looking at this whole lot as a, you know, as a collection, of, I, I remember thinking, is there, a, is there a theme that goes right through it? And I think the theme is life in whatever form. I know some of it is perhaps spooky. And uh, some of it, well, the anxiety one is quite, 
it's incomplete and deformed, but everything is to do with life, I think. Well, that's, that I think is a feature about them, that this is very much audience participation. So many paintings you just look at and you say, oh yes, I know what that is, that's a sort of sunset and there's a, a hill over there and a little bit of water. But then, that, I mean, with, the, with these, they, they can be totally different things, totally different people. That's a strange thing. That was called Three Disgraces. And there are a whole lot of little things to under. I notice here I've just popped dots in. You see, to put dot there and it's a, what, a hedgehog or something. It's all a skull there. The disgraces. But that's a, a shake, okay? That's, uh, but this is paint and shake, um, which is different to ink and shake. But I, you say I like all these, it's all accidentals. This is 72 again. This is here yeah, that uh, most of them happened. Ah, well, I was at Binham, and the Binham pottery has just stopped. Then all these happened, in quite a sort of flood, I think. So this was your return to painting? Yes, it was. And it was very, I might say, unexpected. That's 72 again. It's a very um, unformed one, that really. You see, they can the things which one can't do. And then you've got a very highly detailed little bit here. And these are all little bits of ink which dried on the edges. And he's got some sort of nasty teeth. Which... And this one I called Sculpture Park. These things suggested vertical, vertical forms in, in really in a, a setting, in a landscape. Uh, some of them are certainly things which one could have carved. But then again, the odd thing crops up. They've got the little person here, or a little bird, or a little what? 73, 75, this is worked on again. Now, these now this is quite different. Um, there are a group here which were done with not, a, not an artist's brush at all, a really crude brush with big bristles, the sort of thing you might use for varnishing a fence in the garden. This again is black poster colour, it's not Indian ink. And you see what's happened here. I made all these shapes, then washed them off when they're half dry. So you get these beautiful marks in this grey bit. A lot of these are made by the bristles, these, these sort of comb marks. Uh, this, I think, is, is beautiful and absolutely unattainable, except by allowing something to happen. They were solid black, and uh, yes, and one didn't know what was going to happen on, in the wash. This one I called West Wind. There's sort of myths in there about the West Wind being something which seems to be more special than other winds. But that's again 72. 72 is a good year. This was a wash off, and it was, this is Indian. You can usually tell the difference between Indian ink and black poster because the Indian ink's got a shine, which this has. Uh, what happened here was that it was the same sort of technique as that, but it came out quite differently. You see, the paper, the paper took this, took the ink, and went quite dark. So it, I got white and. Put round, and I've called. I call this one astronauts practicing weightlessness because it, that's what it seemed to be. These people who don't know really what's happening to them. And that this one is so sort of mad. I think it's called dancing bears. Just a couple here, which turned out like West Wind, but you, but you see, since the washing off was delayed quite a lot, you haven't got the... Um... This one is called Are We Still Friends? He's not very pleased. The same thing with this, you see, as 
there's, there's all the pair of these. Now this, this one's called Falling Out. Nearly at the end, don't worry. This one's called It Wasn't My Idea to Start a Family. And this, this was happening. This was a great surprise to me. Because your prior painting experience had been more traditional, shall we say? Yes, absolutely. You see, I was, I was fascinated by all this texture and funny shapes coming out of it, which couldn't have been done consciously at all.